Hey guys, thanks for tuning in to another episode of Real World Angling. I am your host, Aaron Jeffrey. I am going to be talking about the new rockfish regulations for the southern management area today. This is going to be no fishing in this episode, but it's going to be all about explaining the regulations for the rest of this year and as of now moving forward. Um, we do have some new year-round opportunities, which is very exciting. Um, and then we also have some season changes, some um, bag limit changes and things like that. These are uh, new regulations and I'm just gonna follow the southern management area in this episode. Um, this is primarily where I fish. This is gonna cover us from the border, which would be the Point Conception, all the way down to the border with Mexico. That is considered the southern management area. So that's all I'm gonna focus on in this episode. Um, there are, I believe, four other management areas besides that, um, but I don't really fish up there and I'm not super familiar with the changes. So we're gonna focus on what I fish. Um, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go through these different regulations, bag limit, size limits, um, and get you guys all brought up to speed because I know it can be kind of confusing. All right, so let's get into a little bit about these new regulations here, guys. Um, so what Fishing Game has done is they've taken away a little bit of the time that we get to fish, but they've also opened up some new species and they've reduced some bag limits of some fish. So I'm gonna try and keep it as precise as I can to not make it more confusing. Um, so the first thing is, is our traditional rockfish opener would have been March 1st. It is now going to be April 1st for the majority of the species. Um, the only things that will continue to open on March 1st are going to be your sheephead and whitefish. Um, sculpin are considered open year round. So you can still catch sculpin 24 seven, 365, 10 inch minimum size limit, five fish bag limit per angler per day. Um, so that really hasn't changed. Um, Sheephead are going to open up March 1st, and one of the big things with that is they've reduced the bag limit of five fish per person per day. It is now two fish per person per day. Size limit has not changed. It is still an overall length of 12 inches. Um, so real quick on the sheephead, there's three different varieties of sheephead that you're going to see. All the same species, um, but what you're going to see is you may catch a fish that is your traditional looking fish, which is a male which is like this. Um, this is a fish where you are going to see the multiple colors on this fish. Um, and it's gonna be the black head and the black tail with the white belly and then the bright red midsection. So that is a male sheephead. You're going to also then catch fish occasionally that are gonna be like this fish here, which are gonna be primarily uh, pink, almost maybe have an orange hue to them with the white belly. So these are female sheephead. Um, and then you're also gonna catch fish occasionally like this fish here caught by my buddy John, um, which is a fish that is a fish that is transitioning. So sheephead are hermaphrodites. Um, what's really cool about them is they can change sex from female to male. And they do that primarily when the female sense that there's a low population of males. So if you're catching a lot of large male sheephead, that's an indication of a healthy population. When you start to catch those males that are in that 12 to 16 inch range, and it's primarily males that size you're catching, that means there's definitely a shortage of males, so females are having to transition earlier. Um, so I have a self-imposed size limit. I like to really keep those fish that are like 16 to 20 inches that like four to six pound fish. I don't like to keep them if they're 12 and a half inches um, It's perfectly legal, but that's just my own uh, my own personal kind of size limit um, <clears throat> So sheephead will be open March 1st all the way until December 31st um, So that really hasn't changed much um, Whitefish are gonna be the same um, so the other thing is now they've broken down rockfish into three separate categories. 
So you're gonna see nearshore rockfish, shelf rockfish, and slope rockfish. And I'll explain them all a little bit to you, but try not to make it too confusing. Um, so all rockfish are closed January 1st to March 31st. So everything will open on April 1st. So from April 1st to September 15th, you may fish any depth. There's no more depth restrictions. If you wanna fish 60 feet, you can. If you wanna fish 600 feet, you can. If you wanna fish 1600 feet, 2600 feet, there's no more depth restriction whatsoever. Um, obviously, if you're gonna fish that deep, I recommend a power assist reel, um, and you're definitely gonna need the electronics to fish that deep, but there is no more depth restriction. So for your near shore rockfish, which are a lot of the fish that are considered near shore rockfish are typically found in central and northern California. Um, but it's your black rockfish, your blues, um, the quillbacks, the chinas. Um, but this also is going to pertain to what we catch down here, which would be your kelp rockfish, your copper rockfish, your gopher rockfish, uh, and your tree fish and then um, olive rockfish or Johnny Bass, and then also um, Cabazon and kelp greenlings. So we don't see greenlings down here, but Cabazon we still do. So Cabazon have a 15 inch minimum size limit uh, and they are a limit of 10 fish per day per angler. So Cabazon are really cool. They're these fish here. Um, they look kind of like a lean cod. Um, they are phenomenal eating. You'll get some blue ones where the meat's really blue and then it turns bright white when it's done. Super cool fish. Um, very good eating fish. Um, so that group of fish that I just told you about is going to be April 1st to September 15th, any depth. And then from September 16th to December 31st, completely closed. So they are no take, no retention. Um, you cannot keep any of those fish. Um, so then we're going to move on down to your shelf rockfish and your slope rockfish. This is more commonly the stuff that we'll see down here. Um, you're going to have your boccaccios, your canaries, your chili peppers, um, your flag rockfish, which I call barber poles. Um, but you know, your honeycombs, the Mexican rockfish, um, which is something we've started to see a lot more of, um, which is this fish here. Um, very good eating fish. Once they opened up the 600 foot depth, we started to see more of these fish. Uh, they're kind of a dark red and they have a solid, uh, this, that band that goes right through the middle of them. So something we're seeing more and more, but a very good eating fish. Um, but square spots and starries, um, tiger rockfish, uh, your vermilions, your widows, um, that's all going to be in your shelf rockfish. So, and then slope rockfish, this is the deeper stuff. So this is the stuff that we're gonna probably start seeing more and more of with the unlimited depth restriction. Um, that's gonna be fish that are gonna be like your bank rockfish, your short rakers, um, yellow mouse, rough eyes, and then the one that I'm most excited about, which is gonna be blackgill. So this here is a, uh, a picture of a blackgill that was some bycatch a few years ago. Um, while I was deep dropping for swordfish, um, I hit the bottom and pretty much as soon as I hit the bottom, hooked this fish. Um, what's really cool is you can see this fish came up from over 1200 feet of water with practically no barotrauma. Eyes aren't blown out, there's no swim bladder, um, but you can take a look and you can see how the black patches inside the mouth here. And then there's also these black patches that are all inside the gills um, this is a black gill rockfish. So most of you guys have probably never seen one. Traditionally a very deep water species, something I'm going to target more and more this year. Um, but this fish was descended, um, and I believe made it. We dropped it down a couple hundred feet, didn't see him float back up. So, uh, that's one that I'm personally most excited for. So those fish, your shelf rockfish and your slope rockfish are gonna be open uh, April 1st to September 15th at any depth. And then come September 16th to December 31st, you must fish seaward of the 50 fathom line. So this is really important, guys. 
Um, the 50 fathom line is something that DFG's come up with with a whole bunch of waypoints, uh, which I can uh, list the waypoints at the end of the episode if you guys uh, are interested. I'll go ahead and post them up if you want to look at them. Um, you can be fishing a spot that is deeper than 300 feet. So a fathom is six feet. But so 50 fathom, that'd be 300 feet. You can be fishing a spot that's 325 feet deep, but still technically be inside what Fishing Game considers the 50 fathom line. That's because of the bottom contours and the way the ocean is, there's no way to draw a perfect 50 fathom. It would have made it much easier if they just said you couldn't fish deeper than 50 fathoms, but they're very specific about it being a rockfish conservation area boundary in RCA. Um, so just because you're fishing in 330 feet of water in November doesn't mean you're necessarily legal. So what I would recommend is take the waypoints, plug them all into your GPS and create a route from point to point to point to point to point. And then if you know, in the general area that you fish and then uh, make that blue, red, whatever you want your track line to be. But then, so you always know what that route is and you don't ever cross that route. And you know, you don't want to get a ticket. Um, so, but what also that means is, so that's, that's uh, seaward of that line, you must be fishing deeper than that. So you can't fish any shallower. Um, <clears throat> One of the other big things that has now been open is, like I said, sculpin, open year round, that really hasn't been a change. Um, but now we have this new category of fish, which are other federal ground fish. So other federally managed ground fish. Um, you guys can read the list, I'll post it up here for you. But the only ones that are really important uh, that I wanna cover are gonna be the Pacific Cod, the Pacific Whiting, Thorny Heads, and Sable Fish, AKA Black Cod. That's what you guys all probably know it as. You go to a restaurant and get like miso black cod. It's a phenomenal eating fish. Um, you can get it at Blue Water Grill. They have an awesome black cod deal. Um, it's a great dish on the menu down there in Newport. So if you ever have a chance, stop by. Um, but so these fish, as well as a couple other random ones, other flatfish, grenadiers, you know, arrow tooth flounder, which again, we don't see much of down here. Um, Petrali sole, starry flounder. Again, that's typically stuff that's more central to Northern California. Um, but those fish are gonna be open year round at any depth. So 24 seven, 365, you can fish uh, thorny heads, black cod, Pacific whiting, which is also known as Pacific hake. Um, but those fish you can fish as deep as you want, which is really cool. Um, that's what I'm most excited about this season is to be fishing the black cod and the black gill. Um, they are not going to be anything that's going to be something that you're going to go out and regularly target with great success, I don't believe. Um, most of the commercial guys that fish these black cod, um, which are these guys here, fish them very deep, anything from 2,500 to 3,500 feet deep, and they typically fish them on a string pot design. So they will drop large, they look almost like the uh, commercial crab traps that guys use up north, but uh, they will drop those down to the bottom on a string and anywhere from like three to seven pots, and they soak them for like anything from I think 24 to about 72 hours is pretty common. Um, these uh, sable fish are really cool. They don't have a traditional swim bladder. Um, so these guys will pull up their traps from 3000 feet deep and these fish are as lively as can be. Um, they are not found on top of hard pinnacles and stuff like your other rockfish traditionally are. Um, they are fish that are typically found in the mud. If you've never seen one, head down to the Dory Fleet by Newport Pier, uh, Friday, Saturday, Sunday morning, I believe. Um, those guys still fish them, and I believe they still fish them on long line, um, like a set line, um, and they typically use salted anchovy, but uh, those guys seem to have pretty good success still fishing those things, um, and they bring in quite a few of them. And there's a lot of fish in there from like two to five pounds. Um, every once in a while, you'll see a larger fish, like 10 pounds plus, but it seems like a majority of that fish is in that like two, three to five pound range. Um, great eating fish um, they are also very successful down there at fishing thorny heads so this is a thorny head um, they are a bright red fish they do not suffer barotrauma either 
Um, they have lots of spikes all over them. There is a short spine and a long spine. Thorny head, I believe is what they're called. Um, a large one is two pounds, so that would be a very big one. Uh, most of these fish are gonna be like 10 to 14 inches. They're very good eating fish, but they don't get to be very big. Um, and then you also have Pacific Whiting or Pacific Hake, which is this fish here. So I've caught a few of these fish before. Um, I've caught them out on the 150 on the deeper edge. Um, and uh, not very big, 14, 16 inch fish. They do get considerably larger than that. Um, the only negative to these fish is they must be taken care of. So if you catch them, you need to ice them down immediately. They don't freeze particularly well. Um, they do taste very good, but they do need to be taken care of. Um, so those are the three fish that I'm most excited about when it comes to the other federal ground fish. Um, the first one obviously regarding the rockfish is going to be the blackgill. They get to be relatively large. Um, and again, it's just something new to fish. So that's what I'm going to be spending a lot of my time targeting. Um, now fishing this deep stuff, we're going to talk about some limits real quick. Um, Regarding the depth limits also, um, being open year round or being open from April 1st to September 15th is no depth. That is only pertaining to you if you're not fishing in a cow cod conservation area. So this map here shows the cow cod conservation areas. So it does pertain to Santa Barbara Island, San Nicolas. There are lots of cow cod conservation areas um around these area these islands ignorance is definitely no excuse guys so make sure to look those up um and buy one of the maps so you guys know where you're at and know where you're fishing um we'll talk a few little things real quick regarding no retention fish um and then a couple other small things regarding limits so this here is a picture of canary rockfish yellow eye rockfish and then vermilions so down here, we don't have to worry too much about yellow eye. Um, definitely more of a Northern California, all up into Alaska kind of a fish. Um, but they would be closest probably looking to a cow cod, um, I guess. But uh, so you can see here, there's a lateral line that's kind of clear white on the canaries. The yellow eye have a bright yellow eye. They're a bright orange fish. They're very easy to differentiate. Um, but these are the things you guys definitely want to pay attention to. Get familiar with your rockfish species. Um, and again, most importantly, if you don't know, let them go. Last thing you want to do is get caught with something that you're not supposed to have. Um, the other thing that you may run into is going to be cow cod. So not super prevalent but now with the opening of all depths we're definitely going to see more cows um, they have a very large head they've got a big upper jaw they have almost a pink or an orange color to them they have big spines on the back um, they have these wide bars on them and then sometimes you'll catch them to where they're just almost kind of yellowish all the way through but again those are zero retention you cannot keep any of those in the state of california you cannot keep any yellow eye and you cannot keep any bronze spotted rockfish in the southern management area. So those are a few things to familiarize yourself with um, because those are all no take. So very important to know those. Um, let's talk size limits real quick just uh, to keep everybody familiar. So the one I already got talked about was sheephead, so we know that's changed a little bit. Ling cod is still two fish per person, 22 inches total length, nothing's changed there. Sculpin haven't changed. Um, regarding all these other federally managed ground fish, the thorny heads, the sable fish, etc., those are 10 fish per person per day with no size limit. So those are all going to be 10 fish per person, no minimum length. Um, if you're going to fillet any of those fish on the water, the ones I just mentioned, you've got to have a one inch patch of skin on. When it comes to filleting all other types of rockfish, you want to leave all the skin on. They don't have a minimum fillet length, um, but you need to have the skin left on. So now we're going to talk about um, coppers and vermilions. We don't really catch coolbacks down here. Um, copper rockfish, which we know is chuckleheads, this fish here, um, these are one fish per day per person. 
So there used to be a limit of 10, but it is one fish per day per person. Um, vermilion rockfish are four fish per day per person. So the fish that everybody thinks is a vermilion rockfish and what everybody seems to be very familiar with calling a red, this here is a red. It is bright red all the way through. There are no blotches, no bars, nothing like that on its back whatsoever. That's a red. Um, that is a vermilion rockfish, AKA red snapper. Uh, these fish here are um, sunsets. So these fish are two fish that came out of about 400 feet of water. Uh, my daughter wound up all by herself. Um, but these are sunset rockfish, so they look very similar to reds. Um, the biggest thing is, is if you look along the back, they have all of these blotches and they're dark green to black and these patches all across their back. So these are what everybody's been calling reds forever. After talking to Fishing Game, they've run genetic studies, which I can post up for you guys. Um, these are sunset rockfish. They look very similar. Fishing Game says they don't uh, like crossbreed um, with the reds, but again, that's still kind of TBD, I guess. But that's a red, or those are sunsets, those are reds. And then here's a really good side-by-side -side comparison of a red and a sunset. So the fish in his right hand, as you can see, that's a red, it is solid red all the way through. The fish in his left has that small lateral line that's kind of white, but also has all those blotches across its back. One of the big things with this whole 50 fathom closure at the end of the year is to protect the vermilion rockfish. So up north, uh, central California, northern California, reds are caught all the way into like 25 feet of water. So the guys up there catch them very shallow. They're bright red. They don't suffer the barotrauma from that shallow. Um, a lot of the fish that we catch shallow are true reds. Um, Fishing Game has stated from research trips, etc., that they typically do not catch reds over 300 feet. So that is the whole deal with this 50 fathom rockfish conservation area to protect vermilion rockfish. Sunset rockfish are typically found deeper and that's why we can fish them year round. Now, the only issue with that is going to be, you can't tell them apart for the most part. Your average angler is not gonna be able to tell the difference between a sunset rockfish and a vermilion rockfish. And when I ask this question, that is exactly why Fishing Game has lumped them under vermilion rockfish for a four fish per person per day limit. Because technically the way it's written, you would be able to keep 10 sunsets, but since you can't tell them apart, or it's very difficult to tell them apart for most anglers, um, they're lumped into vermilions. So I'll post up what I found here, and then if you guys wanna pause the video, you guys are welcome to read it. Uh, but this is what I found regarding the genetics and then how they're lumped together. But that covers most of the new regulations. Um, like I said, bronze spots, cow cods, yellow eyes, can't take them, possess them, retain them whatsoever. Um, we went over the year round stuff. So this is all for boat based anglers. Shore based anglers are gonna have different regulations. You guys can look up on those. I don't target rockfish from shore. I don't fish sheephead from shore, anything like that. So not something that I'm gonna cover in this episode. Um, but yeah, that's pretty much uh, all the fish species, the retentions. Um, the only thing I want to cover real quick with you guys was some gear. I picked this up here in Alaska, guys, when I was up there. Um, this is called a SFD. This is a Shelton Fish Descender. Um, very basic packaging, but instructions are there on the back. Um, these are made in the USA. This is a veteran-owned business. You can get it from sheltonproducts.com. Um, this is the simplest rockfish release descending device on the market. Um, there's a company out there called Sequalizer, which makes one that works on pressure at a certain depth and it releases. Um, but as you guys can see, this is super simple. We've got like a 200 pound barrel swivel at the top and then metal that's bent into a very specific way. It's very sharp here. And then 
I'll loop down here. So all I do guys is take this thing, use a little carabiner on the bottom, depending on how deep I'm fishing, how big the fish is. This is a two pound lead just for example. But if you were to catch a cow cod that needed to be released, or if you were catching small reds or sunsets, you know, even those small green spots, I know a lot of guys don't want to deal with the hassle of descending a 10 inch green spot. But again, it's still a fish and we need to protect our resource. So this you would tie up to your main line. And then this is how this sits right here, guys. So all you do is go ahead and take your rockfish. <clears throat> so this is gonna be my little rockfish here, even though it's a mackerel. This is a unique Bates mackerel. Uh, Gene Yoon hand pours these and hand carved everything. So you can check them out, uniquebaits.com, I believe. Maybe uniquebaits.net. Um, but check him out on Instagram, Y-U-N-I-Q-U-E. Um, he does bluegills and anchovies and mackerels and the sickest baits on the market. But so what we're gonna do is you take this, this goes through just the top lip of your rockfish. You wanna get it up over this little guy here. You're gonna drop this down. Get down to a couple hundred feet and then yank on this as hard as you can. This will then release off your fish. You can wind this up and your rockfish can swim away. So that's really important because those fish need to equalize themselves again, guys. Um, like I said, it's not required by law. I wouldn't be surprised if shortly they do require this by law. But like I said, this one is the cheapest, most basic, most effective one that I have found. If you want to buy a sequelizer, great. Um, but I don't think it's necessary. Um, I'm going to cover gear with you guys here just real quick. Um, to show you guys what I'm going to be fishing this season. So what I'm going to be fishing this season, guys, um, I'm going to be fishing real deep. My main goal here is to target the black cod and blackgill thorny heads. Um, again, just because it's a new fishery, uh, I did install a new transducer in the Ranger last year for short fishing. Um, that's a B175M. And I actually was out metering around a few weeks ago. Just looking around, so here's a screenshot I found of like a big wreck out in like 1600 feet. Um, I kind of chopped it up a little bit, but you guys get the idea. So this thing works great for deep water. So I'm hoping to put it to use. Um, like I said, I'm not gonna meter the stable fish and stuff, but just to get a good idea of the bottom. Um, so this is what I'm gonna be fishing. This is a Tanacom 1000. Uh, I believe Diowa just released the new Tanacom 800 and 1200. They took the motor uh, out of the front of the reel here. They put it inside the spool, which has increased torque and power, and then it's a lot more efficient. Um, and then it also has increased the line capacity. So an 800 or a 1200, the new Daiwa. But this is what I'm fishing. I've got this loaded full of 1100 yards of 65 pound J Braid uh, X8. This is on a seven foot uh, extra heavy Proteus. Um, and then I've got a deep drop rig here that's actually an East Coast rig, came from Virginia. Um, they call them chicken rigs, but essentially it's a double dropper loop. Very hard to find them there with two hooks, which is what we're limited to. Um, so for everything I mentioned in this video, guys, you are limited to two hooks. It's the only part that's disappointing to me about the other federally managed ground fish is that we're still limited to two hooks for fishing sable fish, thorny heads, all that stuff, but it is what it is, that's the rules. So this here is a giant, like 300 pound snap swivel. Um, then this rig here, we've got a ball bearing swivel. We've got some 200 pound mono. And then these are these really cool swivel sleeves. So there's two of these on here. It came with three. I just clipped the other one off because they gotta be legal. They're about, I don't know, 24 inches apart. Um, and then we just have another snap swivel down here for our weight. So what's really awesome about these guys is when you're dropping down a thousand feet, 1500 feet, your traditional dropper loop, your line just isn't stiff enough. So it's gonna spin, it's gonna twist. If I'm dropping down that far guys, I wanna make it count every drop. So, this is a 300 pound lead crimped into like, I think this is a 7.0 Mustad. 
um, a stainless mustad hook. And I got some small squid skirts just in case for whatever reason I got picked clean. Might still get lucky, you know, little glow squirt. Um, but these swivels here are really important. So they don't allow, the line is stiff, doesn't allow anything to tangle. And then if you do catch a double or even a single, um, when you're winding them up, you're not gonna get those fish that spin and trash your line because that swivel can move freely. So you're not gonna get tons of line twist. That fish can spin around all he wants. He's not gonna twist up your line. You know, I mean, this is the best thing for dropping deep. So this is what I'm gonna be fishing a majority of the time. Um, what I do really like about this is that it's got a roller tip and it's got just enough action that I can fish three to five pounds of weight, but it's still soft enough I can see the bite. Um, then I've also got a Tanacom 500. And then for my lighter setup, if I'm gonna be fishing you get a thousand foot range, 600 to a thousand feet. Um, this is a Tanacom Bull 500, but you can get this, the new Tanacom 500. Uh, I have this spooled up full of 50 pound J-Braid. Um, that'll be for fishing, yeah, the 600 to a thousand foot range. This thing, the 1000, I'm gonna fish anywhere from uh, 1200 feet to 2500 feet. Um, now, being that it is an electric assist reel, which is something that's pretty much a necessity for fishing that deep, um, they do come with a power cord. Make sure to check your connections, make sure they're not corroded, but I've installed a new plug. This is a really cool self-locking plug. Um, that's gonna go right in the console, the Ranger. Um, but then I have power on the boat. If you guys are gonna get an electric reel and gonna fish this stuff deep, I highly recommend either hard wiring to your boat if you can, if you can't do that, pick yourself up a lithium battery. Um, there's lots of great choices out there. You don't have to buy, you know, one of the high end name brand batteries, um, especially for this. Um, you know, you can look at Wise on Amazon is a great battery, has awesome reviews. Um, I have a Time USB in my smaller skiff, 50 amperage hours, a um, couple hundred bucks will last you all day. Um, you just have to have a charger that is capable of charging lithium batteries, but save yourself the weight. Um, they also make battery packs. You can buy a battery pack on eBay um, that will clip onto the rod and then go into the reel. The big benefit to the battery pack is it keeps you extremely mobile. You don't worry about the cord. And also guys, buying an electric reel now will double duty as fishing this deep rockfish stuff and then come summer and fall, you can fly the kite. So you can use to fly the kite for that big bluefin that's been around the past few years. So the only thing I'll tell you about the electric reel guys is make sure you're not fishing your electric reels in Mexico. They are illegal down there. Um, this has been a big discussion. A lot of guys think you can fish them. In Mexico, you must have permission from a doctor to use a power assist reel, pretty much a doctor's note. Um, I can find the link and post it up for you guys, but look it up. So I think I've covered everything guys as far as basic regulations, everything you guys need to know um, as far as depth, open season, size limits, um, you know, telling fish apart, and then uh, you know, a few basics of the gear that you guys are going to need. So if you guys have any questions, please shoot me an email, drop a comment, um, hit, the, hit the subscribe button, I really appreciate it guys. Anything you guys can do to help support the channel doesn't cost you anything to leave a comment or subscribe or give me a thumbs up, but it does great things for the channel. So if you guys could do that, I would really appreciate it. If you guys have any questions, like I said, feel free to reach out to me. Uh, let me know what else you guys want to see. Uh, I think I'm going to get into the venture here of bait making possibly in the future. Still kind of undecided on that, but you know, just another hobby. Um, I also picked up a 14 foot aluminum. Uh, I bought a 14 foot Alumacraft that I've been redoing. Um, so I've been putting decks and hatches in that and all kinds of cool stuff. So I'll do a video on that really soon. Um, but yeah, I appreciate you guys tuning in and I hope you guys have a great week. I'll uh, try and make some more content soon and we'll see you guys next time. Thanks.